Have you seen your brain before like this? No, not at all. You're built in a very interesting way. You have, you have what I call the gifted poet brain. One person can't handle the information and process it coming in. The person is processing it all too much. That's you. You're, you're a, it's a rawness. It's a fire hose of social. Hey, good morning. Hi, Andrew. How are you going? Thanks. I'm going to start with the performance test because it is more valid and straightforward and easy to read. And overall, you're sharp but a little tired is the takeaway. The average score age match compared to other 38-year-olds is uh, 100. So you're at that top edge of typical where you're starting to become advantageously on. And you're fine for being reactive or impulsive. Nothing in the way there. However, you can see these little bar sets below each of the four big resources. And you can see that blue bar is, is not hanging out at the top. And later in the day, this one's going to kind of wear out or when doing too many things at once, your stamina is low. And you also have a cranked up what's called prudence. You're being very careful. You're noticing, you're adjusting. I'm curious how the carefulness gets measured in the test. Because, I mean, that, that matches my experience. Um, and... Overall, how it comes across is I do reasonably well on these things, but it's because I'm extremely careful and I get very tired. Prudence is what happens after you start to make a mistake. What happens in the next trial? Do you correct? Do you make the same mistake? So stamina is the big takeaway. Here, this is all within normal limits or typical. It's all fine. But you shifted gears oddly fast, oddly quickly in the visual, in the auditory system but not in the, you know, typically in the visual system. That's kind of interesting. That's interesting because I once had my visual memory tested and it was off the charts low. It makes sense that my auditory is better, but it's interesting here that my visual is quicker, but it's harder for me, but the auditory is easier, but it's also slower. There's some stuff going on in the auditory system behind the right ear. I would guess your partner, friend, whatever starts talking to you and you have a habit of saying, oh, sorry, what? Because you weren't already listening, so to speak, more automatically. Actually, what happens is very similar to that is I hear it, I remember it, and I respond to it 20 seconds later. Oh, or, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like I'm busy doing something, I'm asked a question, I'm like, hang on, let me just finish doing what I'm doing. And then I and then I respond to it. Yeah, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's, this is usually a very very subtle auditory processing issue, and for you, it's super subtle. But there it is, and we saw it in the performance test, and that is what you're describing behaviorally. Um, get your professional, romantic, and other partners in the short term to call your name or give you a beat of time, uh, uh, give you an alerting cue, and then a beat of time, and then continue. Hey, honey, you want pizza? so much better for you than honey could you please put that down and find a stopping place and come look at menus i'm so hungry you'll hit the break you'll orient you'll start on the tape yeah so tell your partner here's how you can help me listen to you better <laughs> give me that that beep but you can also train this away you bring up the, uh, the down the thetas up the alphas up the betas and you should be able to notice more control over the stream of information that's kind of always there So um, there's some stuff going on in the frontal lobe where the, the alpha is super low, the, the chill, the rest mode, the actual activated voluntary tone, they're both kind of low, which taking over is an automatic, an automatic frequency. It's letting that tissues kind of act and react. Both sides actually are doing that in the frontal tips. And the frontal tips are involved with the approach versus the avoid system. They help you balance that. And you can think of a front porch of a house with a happy little kid on the left going, hey world, come here. And on the right of the porch is a grumpy old man going, Rawr, no, leave us alone, too hard, eh, sucks. And you balance that based on how safe and energetic and rested and excited, whatever else you might feel. This left front having a lot of theta and not a lot of beta often means 
that someone's happy little kid doesn't want to go outside, even though it's sunny. No, too much work. I don't want to. And they get amotivated and hard to find your joy, your brightness, your resilience, your effort kind of stuff. Um, I, I usually have to put a lot of effort into motivating, my, motivating myself to do anything. And it doesn't last. The energy doesn't last very long. Um, the right front, the grumpy old man, when he has lots of theta, it's more, more than just irritability. He starts feeling a sense of overwhelm. And I call this the dread marker where the, where your happy little kids inside won't come outside and skip around the neighborhood and your grumpy old man's out there, like being angry at the traffic, scaring the neighbors a little bit. It's like exerting and bracing against things being hard. So those are things that if they, if that rings true, if those metaphors silly as they are ring true a little bit, you have an opportunity to train the frontal lobes and right the ship a little bit, you know, bail yourself out and have that natural buoyancy back where you can ride stress and not, be you know listing in the absence of a storm i'm seeing a little bit of extra delta amplitude and down here seeing some low delta phase lag here's the scaling on the phase it's line thickness uh low phase lag stuck together delta phase generally means that um we're feeling some brain fog some persistent fatigue and tiredness yeah definitely yeah um I'm currently on a four month break to try and feel better about that. <laughs> so, um, what I'm realizing is that rest is not, rest is definitely helping, but there's definitely more to it than simply taking a break from what is draining. Yeah, it's not the amount, it's the architecture, or the quality of your sleep that is, uh, that's why falling asleep is okay, but the maintenance of sleep is not necessarily okay. I thought you might be interested to see before we leave this page though, you're built in a very interesting way. You have, you have what I call the gifted poet brain. There's a spectrum of, uh, uh, it tends to be changes in how you focus and in how you process the outside world. One person can't handle the information and process it coming in. The person is processing it all too much. That's you. You're, you're, a, it's a rawness. It's a fire hose of social. It's not a, a hard to, hard to discern noise stream. Um, this, is, this is how fast your brain is. We're looking at the left hemisphere and we're looking at the peak frequency or the average frequencies. And alpha is your speed of processing. You're built fairly fast as one can be, which is great, actually. The places where some of the numbers are a little bit draggy, some of the circuits are the same places where the delta is actually fast. Delta is rest and repair. You want to see delta close to zero. When we're not reliably getting into deep enough sleep, in those cycles and catching a little more deep sleep each time, the delta feels shorted and starts to rush around fast, you know, during the day and try to rest us when we're awake and we feel both tired and rushed. That seem valid, a little bit of chronically burnt out and kind yeah, of rushed at yeah, the same time. Def definitely. Um, I've been diagnosed with excessive daytime sleepiness. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, sure. There we go. Whenever I see Delta pushed up this high, people feel really tired. They feel like they're not getting enough deep sleep. And when this hangs out above, you know, one or at one or above one for a while, for a few months, it eventually collapses into negative numbers. And you're not there. This is actually the less acute version. This is like a, this is a sleep deprivation for some reason. Maybe it's apnea. I'm seeing mm -hmm. a sprain that is like, why do I feel tired? Ah. Uh, let's see. Here's eyes open. Um, it's more in the back of the head, more visual side to the head is more auditory. So I'll guess some sort of visual, you know, stress or strain. Yeah. I actively ignore most visual things. Like I don't, I don't watch TV. I avert my eyes from flashing screens in public. Wow. That theta is really strong. The vision, the, the right, this is a visual attention. Like you're like a kid who's playing baseball and forgot his sunglasses. Ah, oh, I can't see anything. Where's the ball? Ah. You have both like a, a wide open one and one that's actually struggling. You have a mixed social and sensory junction box. It's interesting. I'm not surprised you focus on, focus on EQ and things. It's probably a thing you like spend time thinking about and experiencing quite, quite differently. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I have, it's, it's no exaggeration to say that I've, had this as a special interest for more than 30 years.
Um, I've gone to ratios here last in the document, and we're just seeing all the same stuff, honestly. We're seeing lack of sleep depth, lack of motivation, a bit of sensory stuff with the visual and auditory and, you know, sensory, uh, social focus again. Um, cool. And if you feel like changing this stuff, I mean, again, I'm never here to tell you what you should do with your brain, but this is generally fairly tractable if you want to push your brain around. The, the thing that has the most of my interest is basically what I've already been focusing on which is sleep oh, okay then, yeah yeah um i really don't see much of a problem with the auditory stuff uh i mean it, it's probably a, a two out of ten priority in terms of actual impact but if i can find a way to allow my brain to rest then i feel like it could actually come back online again because at the moment i feel like it just has such a low capacity to do things and then i do something and then i burn it out straight away uh and then i have to rest again and then as soon as i go back i burn it out straight away so um trying to find a way to stay in that middle ground without burning out um so. yeah sleep, sleep and stressor and attention are all kind of the same resource at some level so, so perfect well uh thanks for that and thanks for hooking me up with chris in london um of course. and yeah of course. I'll, I'll see you another time well i look See forward you. to talking to you take care bye-bye